Hello wonderful bros and this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual brown dwarf and also just brown dwarfs in general because these objects are really mysterious and some of them seem to possess very earth-like conditions. Let's discuss this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So right here we're looking at the brown dwarf I've discussed in one of the previous videos. This is known as Loman 16. This is actually the binary object known as Loman 16 A and B. And I think this one here, we can probably tell by coming a little bit closer. I think this is Loman 16 A. We've recently discovered that Loman 16 A has stripes and Loman 16 B has really large storms. So basically that's kind of how you can tell them apart. But honestly, brown dwarfs in general are actually still quite mysterious. First of all, we have no idea how they're made. Second of all, we don't really still understand um, what the main differences between them are. But we know that there are probably at least sort of like four different types. There are the M-type brown dwarfs. These are the hottest ones and usually the most massive ones, normally with a mass of about 65 masses of Jupiter. Then there are the L and T types, they're both relatively similar, slightly less massive than M types, and usually with temperatures of about 1000 to maybe 2000 degrees Celsius. And lastly we have the mysterious Y types, with possibly something else in between these two. And these are the coldest ones, they're actually normally either colder than planet Earth, or a little bit hotter than planet Earth, with some of the hotter Y types uh, being about 100 or so degrees Celsius. Also, they probably look something like this, so they're actually not brown at all, they're more like magenta or, I guess, violet. Violet dwarfs is a much cooler name. But if you wanted to simplify this even more, what are brown dwarfs in a nutshell? Well, they're not stars, and they're not planets. They're basically something in between, and that something seems to be also kind of classified by different types of colors and different types of light they produce. Some of them produce actual light, like stars, some of them even can fuse deuterium and lithium, producing heat on the inside, yet some of them are not massive enough and can only really be classified as, I guess, failed planets, and the only heat they produce is infrared. Basically, they don't, do not produce any visual light, and probably looks something similar to this image right here. We've also discovered quite a lot of them already, although not that many because they're very difficult to see. But in the vicinity of planet Earth, we have been discovering more and more simply because our infrared telescopes have improved quite dramatically. And back in 2013, we discovered the closest ones, these two uh, brown dwarfs known as Loman 16a and its partner Loman 16b. So these are only about six and a half light years away from us. And sometimes when they're even less massive, we even refer to them as rogue planets. So this is basically where things become really blurry and we actually still kind of have no idea what the differences are. But what we think we do know is basically that there are probably a lot of them in the galaxy, with the estimates being from about 25 to maybe 100 billion different brown dwarfs out there. So basically for every six stars you see in the night skies, you're probably going to find at least one different brown dwarf nearby. And actually some of the closest objects to our own sun are brown dwarfs. And like I said, we've been discovering more and more pretty much every year. And the reason we didn't discover them earlier is of course because they are so dim and so extremely difficult to see. We've even discovered some that possess planets and uh, some of them do seem to possess partners as well. Whereas others like to have partner stars, yet some prefer to be completely by themselves and essentially are rogue planets. But about a decade ago, or about 10 years ago, um, if you were to ask a scientist about brown dwarfs, they would probably say that most of them are still pretty warm on the inside, with temperatures about 500 degrees or so um, at the minimum. And some of the recent discoveries show us that brown dwarfs can be actually pretty cold, and some of them can have temperatures extremely similar to planet Earth. And this is what I wanted to talk about, because there are actually several studies out there Essentially investigating these so-called missing link brown dwarfs and also looking at some brown dwarfs that can either have planets orbiting around them with Earth-like conditions or have actual Earth-like conditions on the inside, both of which are super interesting to us because finding life somewhere else out there and not around a typical star would be pretty fascinating. So first of all, let's talk about this relatively recent discovery. And this is actually one of the more fascinating programs out there whose main purpose is actually not to look for brown dwarfs, it's to look for Planet Nine. 
And it's a program known as Backyard Worlds Planet 9 that's essentially a citizen science program that you right now can go and join as well to help look for more unusual objects out there. So the main purpose is to try to find Planet 9, but in the search for Planet 9, the citizen scientists so far discovered quite a lot of really awesome objects out there. And all of this is essentially based on a kind of a mini game that was created by the wonderful people behind Zooniverse project, which is basically a web-based, kind of like a mini-game system that allows scientists to employ uh, normal people like you and me to basically go and find objects, planets, galaxies, stars, or even just random animals around the planet because there's literally hundreds and hundreds of different experiments running every single second. So no matter what your interests are, you're probably going to find at least one scientific or historical or any other academic um, experiment that probably needs your help. And you can totally just volunteer a little bit of your time to try to go and discover something absolutely incredible with basically these mini games that are provided on the website. I've participated in this program myself many, many times and it's actually kind of fun. It does get addictive to try to go through different pictures and try to discover something cool. But anyway, so they've discovered several of these brown dwarfs using this program and more recently they've discovered yet another really interesting, very unusual so-called missing link planet or missing link brown dwarf that's just a little bit warmer than planet Earth with temperatures of maybe about 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. And this is where it kind of gets really interesting because we've been discovering some of these objects, so-called Y-type ultra cool brown dwarfs, but these particular brown dwarfs are just a little bit too strange even to be classified as white type because well first of all they do seem to have conditions in their atmosphere that could potentially support life and in most cases they also have quite a lot of water clouds inside of them now for example if you were to try to go inside of this brown dwarf which probably looks a little bit cooler than this one this is Lomond b here we can actually try to find Something maybe a little bit more similar to what we've discovered, so it actually is completely dark as you can see, because it produces absolutely no light. So here I have to cheat just a little bit and increase the brightness, but even then it's still very difficult to see. But basically if you were to go inside of this object, where the temperature is just a little bit warmer than planet Earth, the actual um, conditions would be kind of similar to some of the uh, warmer times on planet Earth when life already existed. And what's more is that the amount of atmosphere available for, I guess, life to evolve here is about 100 times higher than it is on planet Earth, simply because of the size of this object and because the actual conditions, the atmospheric conditions, go really, really, really deep inside of this brown dwarf. Now let's just give this a little bit more light using the side of simulation. So it probably kind of looks similar to any other gas giant, something like this. But like I said, the temperatures are very bearable. Now we don't really think that there is much oxygen here or really anything else where humans can survive, but there's definitely enough conditions and enough actual atmospheric conditions for any other bacterial life from Earth to survive quite easily. And the scientists studying these unusual brown dwarfs that seem to possess Earth-like atmospheres have also discovered that they probably possess a lot of different nutrients, aerosols, and everything else that's kind of similar to what's going on inside the ocean, for example, to allow life to eventually evolve in these objects. Now, there might be a lot of other things happening here that we can't really think of yet, like, for example, maybe there's just a lot of radiation coming from the inside, maybe there are a lot of different types of flares, specifically these really powerful magnetic flares that could be coming from the inside of brown dwarfs as well, and maybe they could destroy life almost instantly. But for now, all of the sort of speculation and all of the theories and calculations do suggest that maybe if the brown dwarf has conditions similar to planet Earth and basically atmospheres that are hundreds of times more voluminous than planet Earth, then maybe there's a way for life to evolve here after all. And the papers also suggest that there could be a way for, for example, photosynthesis to start producing energy and food and even maybe oxygen by using the infrared coming from inside the brown dwarfs as well. Which of course suggests that the conditions for the evolution of life could be present in a lot of these different Y-type brown dwarfs that have these unusual temperatures in the range of planet Earth and basically where, well, technically you could have liquid water. Obviously there will be no surface, at least not where the um, actual atmosphere is located, but maybe the life does not need a surface to evolve. 
You might have actually heard of some of the previous theories, including one from the famous uh, Carl Sagan, who suggested that Venus could have life living in its atmosphere as well, and there have even been signs of unusual patches that we can't even explain today on the surface of Venus, where basically they seem to be produced in a very specific way by something unusual, something either chemical or maybe bacterial. And even today a lot of scientists do believe that maybe those patches are actually produced by some kind of a bacterial life living in the atmosphere of Venus. So if Venus can have it, why not a much larger, much more comfortable, beautiful brown dwarf like the one we've just discovered? And if this is not possible, well, then some brown dwarfs, especially the much warmer ones, could actually have planets orbiting around them, or well, I guess technically they would be moons, and these moons could have warmer conditions on the surface simply because of the amount of different types of radiation coming from the object. Basically, think of this as being a star that produces just enough energy for some of the closer objects to receive radiation to then become warm enough to maybe evolve life that way. Which is actually kind of what this paper here um, discusses in a little bit more detail. Now at a distance of about 36 light years away from us, this particular discovery is probably going to take a while before we can learn more about it, specifically we'll probably need bigger and stronger telescopes, James Webb telescope might actually help us, but for now what we do understand about them is that nothing is stopping these unusual objects from basically developing their own unusual life inside of their atmospheres. And since there are as many as 100 billion different brown dwarfs in our own galaxy, chances for finding something at least on one of them is right now very, very high. But I guess the question is, how do we even know if there is life here? Well, once again, one of the papers discusses this idea and they suggest that, well, maybe we can look for either the actual atmospheric elements produced by life, like for example oxygen, or we can look at various emissions as they interact with the matter itself, with the organic matter, like for example, well, think of the bacteria here on the planet. At some point the bacteria can also die, and as it does it will probably leave behind matter that can technically be seen as organic matter, like for example the bacterial life on earth will leave something like iron sulfides, and these iron sulfides as they interact with the light coming from the brown dwarf will actually leave a very specific spectral sign that we can then detect from earth. This cannot be explained in many other ways. So by detecting the organic matter interaction with the light coming from the brown dwarf, the only reasonable explanation would most likely be that something unusual is happening here, something chemical that's not easily explained without bringing life into the picture. So there are definitely a lot of different techniques we can use later on to try to find what's happening inside of the atmospheres of these objects, and if anything is trying to create anything else in those atmospheres. But as it stands right now, looks like the chances for having something on those objects is actually pretty high. And so these discoveries of brown dwarfs are super interesting. They do teach us a lot more about the galaxy and of course about how planets form, but most importantly they give us so many more chances to discover life somewhere else out there in the universe and probably a lot closer to Earth than other stars we've discovered that life can be possible as well. So right now it looks like brown dwarfs have a super high chance for us to discover something there, but unfortunately right now that's really all we know about brown dwarfs, there's actually very little we know right now. They are super exciting, they're very very interesting, there's a lot of them near us, but they're so difficult to see. And this is actually what the nearest ones to us look like if you had a super powerful telescope, because there's almost no way you can see them without one. Anyway, on that note, once we learn more about brown dwarfs, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, because these objects really really fascinate me quite a lot. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.